out. And we are back. Thank you, everybody. This is Rafa once again with Mystic Times, continuing our conversation with Matt Schmitz. Uh, bef before we, oh, I think your your video is frozen. Before we started uh, recording the first half, I remember we were. Are you still there? Just I'm here. Sure. Yeah. No. Ah, there we go. Your your video is back. We were. I remember we were speaking that I, I find your your last name interesting uh, because I, I said it's Smith, but it's not Smith. And you were telling me a little bit of, about where it comes from and. And, and I think I, I, <laughs> I always do this, like I tell them, oh, let's start recording because this is very interesting. And then when we start, <laughs> it totally goes somewhere else. So I don't know if you, if you would like to, to tell me that story, it, it had something to do with the blacksmiths or-, or, or Oh yeah, Germany. I mean, it's, um, I mean, Schmitz is derivative of Smith. Um, and you go back, it's, it's German um, and it's actually a very common name, but you know, uh, Smith was, you know, in relation to blacksmith, um, which is funny, like, and I, and I just remembered this, um, that I am, or I was working, I started working on an essay recently, uh, maybe several months ago, um, actually starting to look into blacksmithing as a, um, almost like not necessarily a parallel to, but a, akin to alchemy. Um, and that I was thinking that blacksmithing would be, um, it, it, at least in, in how I was starting to interpret it, as that it was a concept that you could use and apply um, with art and music and poetry and using those things to harden and forge the soul um, and also to um, solidify um, your own personal studies into um, whatever it might be. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at, you know, occult and esoteric subjects. So like doing a lot of research and reading into these things, it, um, it can be very draining and it can be very tiring. Um, a lot of, a lot of these concepts, uh, are intangible and it requires a certain amount of um, self-awareness or requires a certain amount of your own higher self awakening a little bit to have, um, to kind of start to grasp these concepts and to make some use and make some understanding of them. But I saw blacksmithing, um, as a great, uh, metaphor for being able to absorb these concepts through the use of music and art and poetry and such and um using music and art um at intervals uh between your studies and between um this work that you're doing between your research when you take breaks you use the music and the art and the poetry to um, solidify that. So I guess you could you could say that that the knowledge is like the 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 molten steel. Your studies are like um, putting that putting that sword into the fire, and when you take it out. You know, you solid, yeah, you hammer it and you forge it, but you also take water um, with, especially primarily with steel. Now, I'm still not like completely up and up on all the blacksmithing terms and the, um, and how to do it and whatnot. Yeah, don't I'm, worry, don't worry. <clears throat> You're probably the best blacksmith uh, among, among uh, the two of us on the audience. <laughs> 
Um, I actually, I actually, my, uh, my brother-in-law has a cousin who is a blacksmith and I've been uh, thinking about asking if I can um, yeah. go and watch his processes and ask questions because um, it's part of an essay that I want to write, but you know, it, I, I find it so interesting that water is involved um, to cool yeah. the steel, to temper it, but that it hot, something so fluid and cool solidifies and reinforces the, the steel. And that I, I view that water, um, that, that aspect of it is like these external creative things, um, but also internal because I, I think that not only like um, uh, being involved in listening to music or looking at art, uh, or reading poetry, but creating those things in the in-between of your studies and doing your serious work. Um, by doing those things, that's tempering that steel with the water. It's reinforcing by engaging your mind with these, um, the, these feminine aspects, um, these shadow aspects of things, um, strengthens the the knowledge and the information and the wisdom that you get out of it in the long run. So when you come back to your studies, you've had time to engage with these creative artistic endeavors, which allows that subconscious part of your mind, one, to, um, to kind of work on all that stuff in the background and the, the, all that, all the creative stuff allows your mind, your, your conscious mind kind of to be fluid and soft and allows it to rest and relax, have some kind of recreation and pleasure, but at the same time, it's doing a different kind of work to, um, it's, giving, it's giving space to that, that shadow and that subconscious aspect. To, to strengthen, you know, I, like, like I said, I'm still kind of like figuring this stuff out with blacksmithing and how I can draw out the parallels to using it as a proper metaphor, but I think yeah, it's I'm there. Right. Yeah, because I think alchemy gets so much attention that I was like, well, is there anything else that can be used um, that can be useful as a metaphor? to doing um, some part of this work. And I, and I thought, thought of blacksmithing and um, I think uh, it's worth de definitely developing. I think anything could be used as a, as a metaphor and an analogy for, for anything. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, there in blacksmithing, you have like, if you, if you take anything, you know, you are able to like uh, separate it into pieces and start figuring how it connects. So like, for example, here in, in blacksmithing, you have the four elements pretty clearly, you know, you have the fire, you have the, the water, like you were saying, which is the, the masculine or, well, let's say the masculine, maybe, yeah, I guess the fire and the water is the feminine mm -hmm. and it's the emotions, you know, and so you have the, 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 the fire you, you have to, to, uh, to feed it with, with air, you know, with wind. Yeah. in order to, to, to give it oxygen so that it burns uh, uh, at, at higher temperatures. And then you have the, the earth would be the, the sword itself, perhaps, or, or the coals that you use, I don't know. And at the same time, you know what we're doing and, and what, what is kind of a, another, another kind of analogy for, for all of this work is we are, and this might be from Jung or, or maybe or maybe not, but we are giving birth to our soul, you know, and we are, you know, other other, other kinds of analogies for this would be like uh, being born again, being born a second time, um, bringing and, and it's again this this idea of the cross that we were mentioning yep. on the first half, and giving birth to the soul would be that that miracle that we were talking about. Yeah, and, you know, in, in this thing of of the blacksmithing. <laughs> that's the that's the art that gets created yeah. that's the soul so that that whole creative process 
that final thing that happens, you know, like I said, that's like the philosopher's stone. That's, that's the soul. That's the, that whole creative central thing that ends up happening. And with blacksmithing, it's that final product um, that you end up creating and forging. It's that, it's that sort of truth, you know, that you made in the, in the, in the, in the fire there. So Sorry to interrupt I mean, the, you. No, no, no. It's it's amazing. I love this because we are both just uh, uh, what's this called? Uh, improvising and jamming. You know, we are like just musicians, but with, yeah. with talking about all of this. And I would even see if <clears throat> all of this is so uh, um, sometimes hard to to pin down and say this is this, this is that. But I'm even thinking that the the soul. I had this this thing. The soul, you know, you, you're mentioning, oh, and that art that we create is the soul. But I would even say that's um, not exactly the soul. Sure, because you the gotta... soul, the soul is is that that growth that happens inside you uh, as a byproduct of of that creation. You know, that creation is. Is bringing something through that is intangible and is only sensible through when 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 you in your interactions with yourself and with others. You know, I think the greatest masters are those people that you look at them and you might not even know that they are masters, but when you interact person to person with them or you see them interacting with others you sense this quality in them this it's it's something that's ineffable totally but it's this simplicity this open heartedness and i think th those people are uh, they, they have this great they are you know it's their example is what is the the philosopher's stone that they have created you know that example of how to be in the world. It's like we tend, maybe you and me, we tend to like uh, complexify all of this and be like, yeah. oh, the, the more complex it is, the closer I am to, 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 no. to the truth. <laughs> but it's like you do the complex trip until you reach the, the peak of complexity and then you come back and, and whatever happened during that journey, that, that was the actual goal of the thing. You know, rather than any peak or any extremes yeah. of of mystical or of or of mundane, you know, it's it's whatever happened inside of you that you are then able to 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 share with others in 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 your interaction with them in in whatever way. Uh, it's like uh, you you somebody uh, crosses you when you're driving in the street and you're able to react differently. That is your your uh, your philosopher's stone, I think. Or, or the soul is, is is present more in that than in the in the song that I composed with all the the knowledge and the and the and the and the traveling through the astral realms. I don't know. I mean, not to discount the the art that we bring, but it's. I think it's more like what what effect that has on others and on yourself. You know, am I making kind of sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... If I if I kind of understand what you were like saying lastly there, like um, like you gave the example of like you know cross somebody crossing the street or whatever and like um, kind of intersecting with where, where you were going or uh, what you do in that moment. Um, in a sense is more important than um, like how you react mentally is, is more important than um, any outward like creationary thing that you do. Um, and I think that's, I think, I think you're onto something there for sure. Um, because that's, that's applying practically um, the work. Um, and it's, it's similar to like Gurdjieff's, uh, the, it's similar to like the fourth way, um, where you consciously 
uh, go through your every day, you consciously react and choose to react how um, in a specific way um, with whatever situations that you find yourself in. But by being aware of that in that moment, like, you know, somebody makes small talk, but you, you be, you're you very consciously aware of what you decide your response is going to be, how you're going to react to that person, and, but always, you know, and in a way, it's like kind of, um, it's a little bit of stoicism, I suppose, in that sense. Um, but I guess stoicism, like, you know, you don't really react, you know, you don't let your emotion, but with, I guess, I think in like the fourth way, and I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not very up on my Gurdjieff and stuff, but, um, you know, you can choose your emotion, um, being conscious of the emotion that you let forth. Um, that's doing the, that's doing the work in the here and now, um, with everyday situations. Um, so that's kind of what I was getting out of that little example that you gave, um, with, yeah, with that. All the, um, all the, the alchemical work, the inner work or the spiritual or the metaphysical or mystical work that we might do if it doesn't at the end of the line impact positively the way that you are in the world the way that you live life the way that you respond to whatever happens the way that you uh that you share yourself with others and with your own self if it doesn't have that expansive or, or positive let's call it impact then what's the point right if if there if if all the work that you're doing internally doesn't doesn't uh, manifest in in you reacting differently, uh, ideally better, but let's not qualify it that way. But I am responding in a in a freer way to to the same stuff that happens in your life. You know what, what was that phrase? Uh, responding always in the same way is the definition of crazy or something like that. Yeah. If, if, if the inner work is not reflecting in you being kinder, in you being more compassionate with yourself and with others, then there's, there's something missing in that inner work and, and you should go back to the drawing table and, and, and seeing maybe if, if you wanna try a different path. You know, you mentioned stoicism right now. Every path has truth in it, you know, because, because of existing in itself but there's also pitfalls and different paths work better for different types of personalities, different kinds of minds, different kinds of bodies, etc. So maybe stoicism is, is for you, but it's not for that guy. Maybe it's for you today, but in, in another moment in, in our lives, we might be a little bit more uh, Taoistic or a little more Confucianist or Buddhist or this type of Buddhism or this kind of Christian or this kind of Gnostic, you know, in, in different points. And it's very important to kind of measure the, the progress, not just by how much knowledge I have acquired, how much I can repeat theories yeah. and stuff, but in how I react to my, my parents or how I react to the neighbors, how I react to when I get sick, how I react to, to whatever my financial situation might be, how I, uh, and not just how I react to everything or respond to everything, but also how am I creating more of what I want in my life? How am I uh, enjoying what I already have? How am I grateful for everything that I already have? I think those are, in, in those, in those moments is where, where we are we are showing the soul, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And without judging the, the, the desire for higher knowledge and, and reading and reading the books and, and listening to this and doing the, the spiritual, uh, the energy work and the spiritual practice and etc. because it's all part of there is no part of the thing that is useless, but it's all in, in uh, with with a certain measure. You know, it's 
it's like a, like a path that's in stages, you know. And if if the for example, recently I was doing this uh, this spiritual this uh what you call it um this uh this energy work, you know, and uh, working with the um, with the aura and the, okay. the, the Taurus field, right? And and I was I started uh, I got back in, into meditation. I was meditating twice a day in the morning and in the evenings, and I was also doing this extra extra energy work. And at some point, it kind of it kind of was too much, you know. And and I I, I got sick actually, uh, like physically ill. And okay, we we might say yeah, you got sick because I don't know you 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 got a cold or you uh, or whatever. But I know for myself that at least in part, this kind of uh, an energetic stress to my, to my yeah. energy body uh, had, had an effect on my physical body, which also we could, again, in this paradox and Ouroboros, et cetera, we could say in the same time that it kind of affected my physical body and I got sick, we could also say that sometimes sickness is a, a symptom of a kind of evolution as well that is happening yes. within you that the body is not yet ready to hold so it kind of kind of has to explode uh, somewhere and i don't so, know yeah, what yeah. my point was in it yeah well Same sometimes you know like um you get you get sick sometimes like what you might call a healing crisis mm. where you have to go through that um, you actually have to get worse or experience um, like a sickness or you have, or an illness in order to get to that higher level of well-being. So, um, you know, if you do like a, um, like a detox, if you do some kind of detoxing, um, you know, doing like drinking a juice or whatever on a daily basis and, and fasting, Aside from that, um, depending where you start from, you might feel okay at, in the beginning, but as you detoxify, um, those things get stirred up and you'll end up feeling worse before you start feeling better. Um, yeah. And it also it's also about balance too. So if you were doing too much of that energetic work, with meditating um, and stuff that might have thrown things all, out of balance, which allowed your physical aspect to then become prone to uh, sickness or your, your physical immune system might have been lowered because that focus was going elsewhere um, away from the, that, your physical self and allowed you, you know, you were then susceptible to something that maybe you normally wouldn't have been. Um, and I always say too, like, I don't always say, but um, I, I've written about it in the past um, number of years ago, but um, because it was an important part for me, um, learning how to eat well and started looking into diet and uh, and health and it was always it was always something that i kind of ignored um listening to like getting information about because it, it wasn't sexy you know mm -hmm. it wasn't uh i wanted to hear about you know you know uh interesting paranormal stuff or i want to hear about you know experiences on psychedelics or whatever it was um but then like, oh, well, this person's talking about eating right and uh, getting to a better place of health. Uh, I turned a channel. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't want to hear about that because, it, it, like I said, it, well, it didn't have that shiny, uh, interesting aspect to it. But <clears throat> I finally kicked myself in the ass and um, um, got to a place where completely reevaluated um, food choices and what I was putting into my body 
and these things. And it was the most important thing that you can do, especially if you, if you legitimately want to uh, grow and prosper spiritually, um, you have to take care of the physical body first. That's the lowest that's the material play and that's the lowest point that's the base if you don't build a strong base you, your foundation is there's nothing there for your foundation mm-hmm. and while in really you know you can read and you can gain all this knowledge and you can memorize all these books and all these facts about all these occult secrets and whatever but it's all bullshit You know, none of it matters unless you start from that, that groundwork. And like, cause I, I, so when I wrote about it in the past, I I said that, you know, if you want to have a revolution, whether it be a spiritual revolution or, uh, you know, a revolution of, you know, your country, you have to start from within you have to you have to have a revolution of yourself um and so that's what uh and that's what that entails is that you have to reevaluate your health and you have to think about you know what you put in your body and you have to build that that framework first before you know you engage upon these higher pursuits it does you know you may not like to do it but once you do it like you'll understand why like you know that establishing that that baseline of health and of um good nutrition affects the mind and the mind is that first um barrier of uh absorbing knowledge before you know the higher self is there to do it but it gets filtered first through the physical mind and the and the physical brain and um all that stuff needs to be in order and healthy yeah. uh, before that revolution starts. We need to clean those filters, right? Especially yeah. the, the root and the ground. We need to have those filters cleaned in order to exactly to receive the material foundation that allows for a better, a better digestion of, of that <clears throat> uh, spiritual information that, that we like so much. But yes, yeah, since for people like ourselves, it's easier or, or yeah, we find it easier to just sit down and listen to something uh, or some mystical information rather than creating a healthy physical habit, you know, that sometimes is harder for, for us. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a great, a great point that you're bringing up, you know, this thing of balance. And I think that's what, what I was trying to get at with my story about the, 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 the getting sick uh, is that, we 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 try to we try to go so much to one extreme and, and we forget that that we need to we there's this this thing that we are always uh, let me see how to put it we um i see this i see this in in, in the world today you know people trying to escape the physical as if the physical is evil or unnecessary or or as if the physical is a mistake and just as in anything there is some truth in in that idea but it's not an absolute truth and people are trying to escape this but what we actually need to learn in at least in this period of time we need to learn to be here in the physical as best as we can because it is thanks to the body that we are able to learn all these other uh, mystical and magical and spiritual things. And again, like we were saying in the first half, what we are trying to do is this balance between the vertical and the horizontal axis of the cross. And if we, uh, if we don't take care of this physical body, we, we are not doing that correct um, creation of the um, of the philosopher's stone mm-hmm. we are actually creating a, a dirty philosopher's stone just as if 
if you're only focusing on the physical body and you're uh, discarding the other half, the, the, the hidden, the feminine side of, of, of life, the other half of the world, you're also creating an, an imbalance and it's going to have negative consequences, which is what I think is happening today. You know, this, this again, this um, fight or this uh, misunderstanding between religion and science, you know, it's again another analogy and another metaphor for the imbalance in the world. You know, the imbalance between the masculine and the feminine, the conscious and the subconscious mm -hmm. mind. And I like your, your idea of shaking hands with the shadow, you know, and, and seeing what, what we can bring in here from, from the, the, the feminine side of the world. But I also like this, this other side of the coin that we're getting to now of, I don't know what we could call it in a, in a similar way, uh, but shaking hands with, with the physical world as well, you know, not trying to just yeah. escape out of the, you know, in, in this thing that you were talking about earlier as well, uh, and I brought up reincarnation, you know, this idea of maybe I, I don't want to come back next time, but, but as long as we don't balance this physical thing, that there is something, something that we haven't mastered here. And if there's anything that we're here for is to, is to master this in, in the, in the, in the most beautiful and poetic sense, you know, not in this, uh, uh, negative conquering thing or, or, or in um, perspective, but in a, in, a, in a poetic and beautiful way. We are here to master not the world and others, but to master ourselves. Again, it's, for some people, it's easier to, to master and, and, um, and tell others what to do and how they need to fix themselves before looking at, the, at their own selves. Yeah. And we're here just to, to fix ourselves because everything else outside that we are seeing is just a reflection of ourselves. And I, I don't mean to be heavy <laughs> on this, but balance, right? Yeah. Balance is such a, such a precious commodity or uh, it's, it's what we're here to, to learn. It, I mean, and it's something like, I think everybody still struggles with. Um, I, I struggle with it, finding balance. My wife hates it when, because I like to work and I like to do all this stuff and um, I get absorbed in it and um, it ends up taking my time and it takes me away from, you know, being around her and stuff like that. Um, so I still struggle to find balance in that, in that sense of it. Um, and there's other things too, like I'm, I have a more chaotic aspect than an orderly aspect. Um, so I need to figure out a way to bring those things into alignment. Um, but in, in, I was going to say too, like, you know, with balance, one, one thing without the other um, leaves that thing corruptible. Um, it's when that balance happens, um, that's when, you know, that's that, like we were talking about earlier, that third thing that happens, that third thing is incorruptible. Um, what comes out of it is incorruptible. The philosopher's stone is impure. The philosopher's stone is pure, incorruptible, um, and can't die um, in any sense. So it's a miracle. Yeah. Um, but the one thing, the, 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 the two opposing things or the two things that are out of balance or, um, that haven't been reconciled, each one of those things on its own is corruptible. It ends up decaying and dying at some point, you know? So that's why you need, that's why you need the, uh, it's complement, um, in order to, merge the to merge and forge and create those things that are that are the incorruptible um the, that light that core of light um that we have within us um to try and reach that thing and that's you know that's that uh becoming in touch with god um that's that incorruptible thing um um trying to think of other ways, you know, kind of put it, but I think, you know, you know, we both know what we're talking about here. 
um, as far as like, you know, balance and the, and, and the, um, and many times balance is achieved through, through things that, that are so simple, you know, and we tend to, to complexify it so much. For example, now I'm trying something new. I'm trying tennis. I'm, <laughs> like I started playing tennis and then I was doing one of these spiritual exercises and the following day I, I woke up sick. So I haven't been able to play anymore since, since my first class. But, you know, trying something new, especially for people like ourselves who, who tend to get very attracted by the spiritual side and the invisible, doing something physical, doing some work with the body you know just for the sake of doing it not to become the best not mm. to to know the the best theory no just because you want to grab a thing in a way that's different from anything you've ever grabbed before and 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 hit for example a ball and 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 trying to get better of course at it but just to to see yourself progressing and evolving another one of the things that i did it was I think it was last year, I started doing, yeah, it was last year, I started doing uh, Kung Fu, this, this particular kind of Kung Fu called Wing Chun, which is the, <clears throat> the type that we see, uh, for example, ah, have, do you like Kung Fu movies? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, have I've, you seen, seen, I've, I've literally seen hundreds of Kung Fu movies. Awesome. Have you seen Ip Man? Yeah, Ip Man. Ooh. Yeah. Those are the best. That's the kind <laughs> that I was learning. And it's so fantastic. And you, you see your body and, and at least me, you know, I see, I kind of, yeah, I see my, my neurons and neural pathways forming. Like you, you do movements with your, with your arms and your hands. And the first time that they are teaching it, they say, okay, do this. And you're like, it's impossible. It feels impossible. <laughs> And, and you look at the, at the, the, the teacher showing you and, and it's like, yeah, just do this. But in the, in the, when you're learning it and you see how far you feel from actually accomplishing the thing and then weeks pass and you try it and you try it and you start seeing some progress and you start seeing muscle memory and etc. And you get this thing that you could never get from reading any book, from listening to any podcast, from doing any energy work you see yourself doing something physical and going through a physical barrier, which is, at least for me, one of the things that, that presents the biggest challenge because uh, I tend to escape to my mind so much. But when yeah. you see that you are able to, to overcome <clears throat> physical limitations, you get this, this I, for me, it's faith. It's like, wow, yeah, you, you remember, oh, this is also possible. And then you start remembering, okay, what did I do to, to actually beat that, that, that limitation? And you start thinking about it. And it's what you said at the start. It's just continue doing it. Just do it. Go forward. Okay, you want to uh, have the podcast? Go and do it. Every week, sit down and do it. You want to uh, learn a, a new skill physically? Just sit and do it. Do it and continue repeating. And that's that's what's so magical about the, the the human form you know you just repeat stuff and and eventually if you repeat it enough times uh, with enough precision you become a master in it but there's no need to 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 try to be a master in in, in everything or in anything you just yeah. have have that repetition and and be happy about the process that that you're learning something new and that you feel feeling good about doing something that you look at the first class and you look at yourself, I don't know, 10, 20 classes later and you see the progress and you're like, wow. Or, or you even, I would, I would show uh, friends, you know, the different moves in, in, in this Wing Chun and, and you would see them trying to do them and being like, hey, this is impossible. And you would say like, wow, I was there just very recently and now I'm, I'm like even sort of kind of capable of, of explaining another person how they can do it. This is incredible, a, a skill that I didn't have, I don't know, a month ago. And that's, that's so beautiful. So I wanna, I, my whole point of this was, this balance can be achieved through stuff that's so simple. And it can even be free yeah. if, you, if you feel you don't have the money to invest in a class. 
you don't oh, just yeah. go to the park and start doing push-ups or start doing uh jogging or mm. or or something you know with, with your physical body you know yeah it can be it can be really anything like for me um yeah. a big that that aspect it can of be it blacksmithing was, you know yeah <laughs> you can do blacksmithing um for me it was like doing a bunch of landscaping in my backyard and it, it, it's not yeah, working with it's not necessarily a, a skill that i needed to have or anything like that it was it's just the it's just the process of doing the physical work like uh i replaced i put like a whole lot of stone in my backyard mm. and it was like um it was like maybe four or five thousand pounds of stone that i shoveled into a wheelbarrow transported and put into place so that was like five like four like i said four to five thousand pounds of stone um, and doing that, and that was just the the physical aspect of that. Um, and then on top of that, I, you know, doing other things and you know, putting in plants and putting in um, like a little walkway and stuff like that. But physically doing it, like I dreaded starting. Like I didn't want to <laughs> to start it. It was like the the worst of it. Um, but once I was like you know, a third of the way in, I was already on my way and I couldn't stop. So, and then when you reach that completion point, then you, you not only have the, that satisfaction of finishing it and following through with it, but that, um, um, because by, like, I think, you know, we occupy our, our, our minds with so much of this um spiritual and esoteric subject matter that doing that physical stuff um hey, you, you you feel that you can feel that balance yeah. you can feel that opposite side of it um kind of emerge within you and um that's good and it's so beautiful to be able to see the esoteric in the in the simple things in life you know, to just be moving stones around or, or learning a new skill. And naturally you're able to see, oh, wow, this is so much like X thing that I, that I know uh, here, up here. I'm, I'm actually embodying this knowledge, you know, this like, okay, we, we learn about, for what a very big esoteric uh, concept or idea is this idea of balance. And, and many times people like ourselves, they tend to, to, to philosophize and theorize about balance without actually practicing it because it's, it's not anybody's fault. You know, sometimes we just don't know how to, how to apply the knowledge. So here's the key of how you apply the knowledge, apply it, just apply it by applying it. It feels sometimes that, oh, to apply it must, must be in a very magical, mystical way. No, it's in a very simple way. You know, that's, that's how you know you're, you're, you're actually balancing is if you're learning something very, very strange, very esoteric, you know that the balance of it will be something very mundane and very, very simple, very earthy. So go from the wind element or the air element of your mind to the earth element of the body. And, and you can't go wrong with that, I guess. Well, this, this kind of, this kind of then brings us full circle back to the beginning when I was talking about, uh, you know, letting your, um, subconscious mind figure out the stuff. So when you're working through these intangible things in your mind and in your heart, that then engaging in like some of that physical activity, like allows your subconscious mind to process that stuff. Um, legit, and it's even like, like you go for a walk. That's what, what you hear about these things. You know, sometimes people go for a walk to clear their minds, you know, um, or I need to go, I'll go for a walk and, uh, or I need to exercise, clear my head and um, get my thoughts in order. You know, that's that, that balancing act that happens. And um, some people, you know, don't really 
aren't consciously aware of it like that that's what they're doing they're just like well i'm just going to go for a walk and clear my head but they're doing that which is it's a it's a level of higher work you know that a lot of people don't engage with so um yeah, yeah i think it's it just brings us full circle back to that yeah it's unnecessary half of of the spiritual work that some people think they are doing when they only escape to to the higher chakras a necessary side of that is also uh, cleaning the the lower the lower filter uh, a, a way that i have understood this is to imagine those those flows of energy one coming from above and one coming from below and if if the entrance is very small you know the the energy that's coming in is very little but if you do work with the with the the two uh, opposite sides with, the, with those two extremes of, of the energetic body you'll be able to receive more of that energy and to 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 pass even even clearer energy through the system you know so i think it's very important to definitely do this balancing work yeah and i think if there's anything any any message that that we could kind of uh, round this conversation with is this is balance it's uh, balance sometimes looks like the simplest most mundane thing Uh, but don't mistrust or don't get uh, confused by the simplicity of of the of the mundane because there is all that magic spirituality is also in the mundane yep. yeah it's it's so so spiritual that you don't even notice it's so complex so esoteric you know the the, the simple things are so esoteric that they seem not to be And, and, and mm -hmm. that's a, a big paradox and there is balance in, in those types of paradox awesome well i think uh i think the snake ate itself <laughs> <laughs> and now it's throwing up <laughs> <laughs> hey so let me ask you one final question that i'm asking all, all the guests okay okay you can interpret this whatever whichever way you like what got you What is the one thing that got you to where you are? Hmm. The one thing that got me to where I am. Um, well, I would say God. And that's synonymous with love. And um, it's synonymous with... Uh, Uh, compassion it's synonymous with uh, kindness it's synonymous with gratitude all the all that stuff is enc encompassed within the one word of god so that's what i would say beautiful thank you so much matt schmitz um and thank you everybody for being there with us uh please matt one more time for people who might be watching this half Uh, could you share your your links where people can find your stuff? Absolutely. Altrusion Grace Media on YouTube. Um, and you can also just search for Altrusion Grace Media in Google or whatever search engine you use. And you'll find probably all the different places where you can uh, access my material and content, uh, such as Bandcamp and Odyssey and Rumble and uh, podcasts and you know, Spotify and all that stuff, so. Very good. Okay, uh, my friend, I'm very happy to have had again the, the great honor to speak with you. Uh, I love how, how these conversations go. Uh, just just free, free form yeah. conversation, uh, talking about whatever comes up. Um, and to everybody that's watching, just take whatever resonates and whatever felt like bullshit from us, just let it go uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe if if uh if one day you come across this video again and and you listen you you might find that you have evolved and then something new resonates and something old doesn't resonate anymore or or some some change you might you might see some change some of the changes that have happened within you reflected in in a 
in a conversation that was recorded and that was uh, dead already uh, when you listen to it, but it, it'll show you your own growth. So yeah, so just take whatever resonates today and, uh, and go with it and, and especially trust yourself, you know? Uh, the one thing that got me here is faith. That's my answer. And it's very similar to yours. It's just this knowing, <laughs> it's also cliche, but this knowing that everything's gonna be all right, knowing that whatever is happening now is trying to tell me something about myself, about where I am, where I'm going, where I've been, and that the power is within me, within you, to change your life, to change your circumstances. For me, it's been faith. I don't know. I think it's a, a, a question that all of us need to ask ourselves. You know, what's that Absolutely. that got us to where we are? Whatever that means for everybody, you know? Uh, you might be going through a hard time and what's the one thing that got you to where you are? You might be going through something great. Also ask yourself that. Uh, and it's not necessarily that the answer will, will be something bad if you're going through a hard time and something good if you're going through a good time. Maybe you're going through a, back to a, for a very difficult time and the one thing that got you to where you are, you might then, then and there, you might realize it's faith, for example, it's God. And that might, well, <laughs> change something within you. So, um, I don't know, uh, these kinds of conversations when that could go for hours and hours, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to, to, to say, okay, the end. But, uh, but this is the Thanks. end. And I want to thank Matt for being there. I want to thank you guys for being there as well. I'm very thankful for everybody that's uh, following the show. Uh, Send me, send me good vibrations so that I can start to create new meditations and new, and new things for all of you guys so that you can uh, enjoy of my, of my abilities, which I'm uh, trying to, to share more and more each day um, and become better and better at for the benefit of all of us. Uh, and because, you know, it's, it's so good for, for myself to share all of this. Um, I'm also sharing some more music very soon. I'm gonna I'm gonna put up a new. I I I had a hard time allowing myself. I'm gonna share this this new album on on Bandcamp, uh, but it's gonna be a, a lo-fi hip hop kind of record. Cool. I'm announcing that one today. Um, you in part inspired me because you make ambient music mainly, or or or, or very prominently. And I remember a couple of years ago, even you, you put out a, a lo-fi record or a few of those. And I was like, oh, you see, he's, he's like doing it. He's going outside of the, of the normal thing that he tends to, to, to do. And he's, so yeah, finally I, I've, I've been making some, some of this uh, genre of, of music for some years, but didn't pull it out. And I've got a few new ones also that I'm, putting together so I'm creating a, a, a lo-fi hip-hop thing that I'm going to put out on on, uh, on Bandcamp very soon and I'll, I'll also share the album here on YouTube so uh, yeah now I gotta great, do man. because I, I, I've told everybody publicly <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm very yeah again very very thankful for everybody that's been watching and following this beautiful adventure sending all of you my love and big hugs Thank you, Matt. I don't know if you would like to, to share some, some closing words. No, I just, uh, thanks for having me on. And, and it was, yeah. uh, it's always cool to have um, just great aimless conversations that, you know, <laughs> that we can uh, talk about whatever. So yeah. thank you again for having me. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a great week. <clears throat> Sending you again. Lots of love. Bye-bye.